Would you like to learn how to make the bomb.com air fryer roast beef just like this? Well, in this episode of the Lisa D's Delight Show, I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious air fryer roast beef. We're going to use some fresh herbs, garlic, and other yumminess. You make your air fryer roast beef like this, your holiday dinner will be off the chain. Lisa D. LDZ family, you hungry? Let's please some palates. I'm using an Angus roast for this recipe, but your exact ingredients and measurements and such will be in the description box below. My roast is a little over three pounds. You just want to be mindful when you pick out your roast that it can fit in your air fryer. Let's start by chopping up some flat leaf Italian parsley, as well as some rosemary and some fresh thyme. Some of the herbs we're going to use to season the roast beef, but we're gonna save some, put some to the side to season our veggies. Let's also chop up some onions, garlic, celery, and potatoes. The first time I made a roast beef in the air fryer, I was amazed at how good it came out. It was nice and juicy on the inside and the outside was nice and charred and it cooks nice and fast. Kind of reminded me of my ex-husband. <laughs> Pro tip number one, you want to always temper your meat before you cook it. You don't really want to cook cold meat. By letting it come to room temperature first before you cook it, that allows the meat to cook more evenly. So after we get this meat all nice and seasoned up and let it marinate in the fridge overnight, then we're going to take it out the fridge and let it sit on the counter for about 30 minutes before we cook it. Pro tip number two. One of the things I like to do to help the roast get moist and super flavorful is to inject it with a delicious marinade. To make the marinade, I start by using some homemade chicken stock. This super delicious homemade chicken stock was my first addition to this holiday series that I'm doing. I'll put the link above so you can see how to make it or you can use store bread. I was just trying to help your palate. <laughs> And yes, I'm using chicken broth on beef. The cow ain't mad, you shouldn't be either. Dang recipe police. <laughs> so to make the marinade, pour some salted melted butter into the chicken broth and then pour in some why in the world would they name it that sauce and a little bit of liquid smoke and some Kinder's all purpose butcher seasoning. So like I was saying in pro tip number two, by marinating the meat, it helps to make it more tender. Not only does the butter help to do so, but also like the vinegar inside the Worcestershire sauce, or however you say a child sauce, the acid in the vinegar helps to break down the tough proteins, and that makes the meat more tender. Cause the kitchen is the wrong room for hard meat. <laughs> stir, stir, stir. Then pour the marinade into a tall glass like this one here. By pouring it into a glass, it makes it easier to fill the syringe. You can find these syringes in supermarkets or in Walmart or Amazon. I love to use injections in large pieces of meat like this one because you know the meat is so big. By injecting the seasoning, you're sure to make it nice and flavorful all inside and out. So just make jabs all over and inject the seasoning all throughout the meat and try to hold your hand over it while you inject because it does tend to squirt out. Now that we got the inside all nice and flavorful, now it's time to work on the outside flavor. So take a stick of room temperature butter and put it in a bowl as well as some fresh garlic, fresh thyme, rosemary, and flat leaf Italian parsley, as well as some, why in the world would they name it that sauce? And also some Kinder's Butcher's All-Purpose Seasoning. This seasoning is really good. It has garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and other yumminess. But even though it does have all of that, I still like to go in with a little bit more of my own garlic powder and onion powder and black pepper. But I don't use any salt because like I said, the Kinder's already has salt and I'm using salted butter. And I'm about to use some better than bouillon mushroom base, 
which is also pretty salted. And I also like to add a little accent, but of course that's optional. But child, if you made it through all the craziness that's going on in this world right now and you're still here, a little accent sure ain't gonna take you out. <laughs> and put some of it to the side because we're also going to use it to season our veggies. Oh, I forgot the better than bouillon mushroom base. This stuff is really good, really flavorful. Now I put down some saran wrap on top of my island and we just wanna slather all this yumminess all over our roast. Try to get it all up in every nook and every cranny. But I was being lazy because it's so messy and stuff. I didn't feel like seasoning the bottom of it. And because I already injected seasoning on the inside anyway, I figured it was already nice and flavorful. So I didn't season the bottom. Now we want to force infuse the meat by wrapping it tightly with some saran wrap so that that seasoning has no place else to go. It can't escape. The only place that flavor can go is right back into the meat. Just kind of swaddle it as if it was a little precious baby because it eels. And then let it marinate in the refrigerator overnight. But if you don't have that type of time, at least let it marinate for one hour. Many hours later. So it's the next morning and I've let the roast sit out on the countertop for about 30 minutes to temper it. I have an air fryer oven and it happens to have a rotisserie thingy in it. So that's how I'm going to roast it. But if you have a regular air fryer, just set it right in the basket. So now I have the roast inside the air fryer and I should have tied it up, but it's the laziness for me. So we're going to cook this roast beef on 375 for 50 minutes and then we're going to check it. I'm a kitchen gadget junkie, but I have to say this air fryer is my favorite gadget. I love this air fryer so much. I use it just about every single day. The only thing I don't love about it is that grease won't come out. Don't judge me, judge your man. <laughs> just kidding. Now, while the roast is cooking, let's season up our veggies. I'm going to hit it with some of that fresh rosemary, parsley, and thyme. Let's season it with some of that garlic butter herb mixture that we made. That's some deliciousness right there, y'all. And I'm going to go in with a little bit more Kinder's. Normally, with my air fryer oven, I can cook the veggies and the meat all at the same time. But because this roast is kind of large, I'm doing the rotisserie thingy. I'm going to have to wait till the roast is done and then I'll roast my veggies. So now we want to get everything all nice and well mixed up. So after 50 minutes, the roast is looking like a whole snack. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and take the internal temperature. So we're sitting at an internal temp of 125. Me personally, I don't like to eat my meat when it has enough blood in it still left that it can get up and walk away. So I'm looking for a well done temperature at about 160 degrees, but I know some of you are weird, I mean different. So here is a chart so that you can do you boo boo. So the roast is going to go back in the air fryer on 375 for another 50 minutes. And once the roast is done, then I'm going to roast my veggies on 375 degrees for 30 minutes. Lisa D. Delight. My God forever. When I tell y'all that this was good, I ain't got to lie, Craig. And thank you to my Lord and Savior for always blessing me and the LDD family. Father, we love you, praise you, and can do nothing without you. Now, God said that we have got to take a moment of silence for all this deliciousness up in here. Ooh. Say it with me, super yummy. So that was my first addition to my recipe holiday series. Here is a preview to the other yumminess that I have coming your way for the holidays.
Stay tuned. God bless you. Let's show you like and subscribe.